Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture number 34. Uh, today we will start with the restricted three body problem. Already we have discussed about the general properties of the three body problems and we know that from our previous discussion uh, three body problem cannot be solved. So, in cert certain restricted cases uh, it is a solution can be worked out. So, uh, therefore, uh, we are trying to discuss about this. Uh, uh, restricted three body problem that is why this notion comes restricted three body problem. Okay. Now, uh, the assumptions will make that the primary and the secondary bodies move in circular orbits about their center of mass. Okay. So, we have one mass here and another mass here. Okay. So, this will call as m 1 and m 2 and the third body it is a lying say here it is a mass is written as m. So, primary and the secondary body uh, move in circular orbits this is the assumption about their center of mass. So, center of mass may be lying here in this place. Okay. So, about the center of mass the primary and the secondary body bodies they are moving okay. and that too in the circular orbit. So, this will make a circle like this here about the center of mass. Similarly, this will make a circle about the center of mass and they will be moving such that they are always opposite to each other. So, this is the first assumption. The second assumption the third body is very small as compared to the primary and the secondary bodies. So, say this is the primary and this is the secondary body. So, third body which is located here this is very small as compared to the primary and the secondary say in the case of the I have here earth and, and this point I have moon and I have a satellite here. So, we know that satellite can be of few thousand kgs. Okay. So, uh, while the earth and moon they are very massive as compared to the satellite. So, in no way uh, though there is obviously gravitational uh, attraction between all of them, but the satellite gravitational attraction on the earth will be feeble okay, and therefore, it can be neglected altogether. So, therefore, um, uh, the second assumption we make the third body is very small. So, that it does not affect the Uh, primary and the secondary bodies. Additionally, we can have one more constraint, okay, but it is not necessary. Uh, the third constraint which I am showing here, so this is written here the third one. The third body may be considered to move in in the orbital plane, in the orbital plane of the primary and the secondary bodies. So, uh, in that case you are assuming that the motion is planar, but it is not necessary this is an additional constraint that you can implement otherwise it is uh, not required. So, with this uh, with these two assumptions we uh, start our work and uh, uh, let us draw the figure first and thereafter we will. So, we have here uh, two bodies. this will show as the primary and this as the secondary. Somewhere the center of mass is located here which will indicate by B and B is nothing but the Barry center in this case we call the Barry center. This will write as M 1 and this is point A and this we write as you no know, then b we cannot write the other one 
let us make this as per, ok b is ok for this place we will make it c a b and c this mass will indicate by m 2 this let us consider m 1 is the primary m 1 is the primary mass it does not matter uh, you can assume m 2 also to be the primary and m 2 is the secondary mass ok. Now, we have to fix a reference frame here in this place. So, let us say we put a reference frame first we define one synodic reference frame. So, synodic reference frame I am just putting this blue line here which is indicating the synodic reference frame excess this is Excess is in the x direction of and x direction of synodic frame. There is a difference between the synodic uh, frame and the barycentric frame, uh, as I will explain you. But remember that uh, reference frame and the coordinate frame, the difference already perhaps I have explained the reference frame. In the reference frame, we write the equation of motion. There, the Newton's law is applicable, but not in the coordinate frame. Coordinate frame is used to describe the position of the uh, particle, or it may be whatever. Okay. But there, you cannot write the equation of motion. So, reference frame especially refers to the um, frame in which we are defining the motion. So, here in this case, this is the excess direction, and then in this direction, we show y s and z s will be vertically up. Therefore, x s y s z s this constitutes the synodic frame. Already I have stated that a and c the mass m 1 and m 2 mass m 1 and m 2 are moving in circular orbit about their center of mass b. Synodic frame is located at Synodic frame origin basically here in this case, this is the origin, it is located at B, but the synodic frame is rotating. Synodic frame is rotating such that or so that. So, that x is always points towards m 1. So, here in this case what is the effect that uh, so the effect is that the angular velocity of this synodic frame and the masses m 1 and m 2 are the same as a result of this and this is written as omega s. So, omega s this is the angular velocity of the of the synodic frame. Now, Barry center also we need to define and arbitrarily we can do that. Let us say that uh, Barry center 
I show it along this direction this is x b then y b can be here in this direction and uh, similarly z b we can show in this direction ok and it is a located at b okay. it is a located at b. I have separated it out here the uh, actually uh, the very centers and the point for the synodic uh, origin of the synodic frame which is here they will coincide, but for the sake that um, uh, it is a visible I have drawn it separately little separation I have maintained okay. otherwise they are the same this is your synodic frame. So, your barycentric frame it uh, is shown like this it will overlap with this. So, this is your synodic frame x b y b and z b and similarly here uh, x s y s and z s y s and z s and x b y b z b and it is not necessary that both of them uh, this z b direction is the same it can be different I, I can choose any any direction I can also take it like this using the right hand rule. Okay, so, with this description now we are set to start the uh, formulation of the equation, but for our formulation I will remove this x b y b uh, so that the figure looks neat and clean. Okay. So, we do it on the next page. M 1, M 2 and then we have this is x b y b and z b. Satellite is located somewhere here. So, coordinate of this one we can indicate like this drop a perpendicular in the plane of the mass uh, plane of the orbit of the mass uh, masses m 1 and m 2 and thereafter we drop perpendicular on this one like this. Okay. We can see that how the coordinates then will be defined. and then the okay. we write this as r r is the radius vector or the position vector of mass m little more change I will do to make it more clear because the axis I have to draw. this is mass m. Now, if we extend y x axis here in this direction obviously, in this direction we will have the axis. So, this is your uh, we have written axis y s this is the synodic frame we have written 
and x b by v already if, uh, I have shown on the previous page, which we are this is the barycentric frame, is the related to barycentric centric, and this is related to synodic. And this point we write as O. So, what we observe from this place that the components are this component because it is lying along the x axis. So, we can write this as x, this becomes y, and this component is z. And this is your vector from this place to this place, which is the radius vector. this is your r. So, purposefully we have uh, removed the barycentric frame, you can write also the equation of motion in the barycentric frame, but we are going to represent in terms of the synodic reference frame components and reason for that will be very soon visible to you. So, x s y s z s already stated that these are indicating the uh, synodic frame. And at this point we have written as B earlier. So, we will write this as the B, B we have represented as the barycenter. Okay, so, for writing the equation of motion, we need to find the forces acting on this mass. Mass is located here, we have the mass here in this point. So, uh, we need to find what are the forces acting on this, then we draw the radius vector from m 1 to this uh, to the mass m and we write this as r 1. Similarly, we draw the radius vector this is R 2. Okay. So, m times d a square r by d t a square the equation of motion always will first write in the equation of motion will be written in b written in barycentric frame. frame, which is inertial. And now, what are the forces acting on this? This we have to write and thereafter we will reduce it to the synodic frame. This is the process we are going to use. Okay. Now, uh, the forces uh, due to the mass m 1 and m 2 we have to calculate. So, therefore, due to the mass m 1 we will have the force acting on this particle will be given by this r 1 q and in which direction this force is acting? This is acting just opposite to the r 1 vector. So, we write here with a minus sign. Similarly, you can see that the force is acting uh, force acting due to the mass m 2 on the mass m this is g times m 2 m divided by r 2 whole cube and r 2. In the barycentric frame. Remember that r 1 I can write this as say the component in the synodic frame we can write it like this, where r 1 is the vector uh, or uh, one more step is required here. Uh, this part we will 
change little bit actually what we can show here that uh, r1 is nothing but r minus x s or say r minus uh, the coordinate of mass coordinate of mass m1 and what is the coordinate of mass m1 if i indicate it by uh, this is your r so r minus this quantity so uh, and this part if we write as coordinate with respect to the barycentric frame uh, so let us write this as x b with respect to the b frame b to 1 okay as we have been indicating the notation we have been using so this is b located here and b to 1 in this point you have one mass m1 so it will go like this and the synodic frame direction this is the way we will express it okay. similarly r2 we can write as r minus now here in this case you are taking positive direction of x along this direction so this will be negative one okay so therefore this can be written as x b 2 or if i put a plus sign and here this is the coordinate of uh, i will explain you what does it mean if i write it like this minus e1 cap so th this one is e1 e cap i am taking here in this direction and e2 cap along this direction e3 cap along this direction in the synodic frame and this notation i am going to use for the barycentric you can put a symbol here in the upper one like uh, i can use a symbol e1 b indicating that this is a uh, unit vector along the x direction of the barycentric frame similarly e cap b2 it's a unit vector along the y direction of the barycentric frame but this is not required the part i am going to explain you that will make you understand what i am trying to do here so if i write it this way so this indicate this is the magnitude xb2 xb2 is the distance from this point to this point okay from b to m2 this is your xb2 and similarly the distance from this point to this point this is xb1 so this is the magnitude and multiplied by the vector along this direction so this vector is minus e1 cap here in this direction this is e1 cap okay and therefore now this is consistent this is minus sign here you can see that for getting this vector i uh, this r1 uh, i need to subtract from r the vector going from this place to this place up to the mass m1 okay from here to this place to this place as i am showing on the uh, in the figure okay so this is done this way the same way this is done and you have to remember that here whatever is appearing this is indicating the magnitude okay if you do not want to write it in terms of magnitude a uh, uh, one more point here the you can see that this sign here is minus here also this minus but this minus sign here and this minus sign ultimately it will make it plus so this is the difference and if you put then the particular value of the xb1 and xb2 in the magnitude so your r1 and r2 vector will be available to you otherwise you do not also require putting it this way you just keep it xb2 here in this place and here in the in this place as i am showing by this arrow you can put a plus sign so if you do that then you have to put here for xb2 while you are working the negative sign okay so th these are the ways of doing and various authors can do the same problem in uh, multi multiple ways now, this is the approach i am taking uh, because it will be convenient to represent it okay now this i have shown in the synodic frame if i write the same thing 
one more thing you should note that any vector r can be written in terms of the synodic reference frame let us say its components are x so x e1 cap y e2 cap and z e3 cap so this is in the synodic frame the same vector if you describe in the barycentric frame so i will write this as the x b e1 cap b y b e2 cap b and z b e3 cap b so this is indicating in the barycentric frame so components will change but the vector r does not change so the components here just it's a changing so based on this our whole analysis will depend so the, this two if you use this you will get uh, the result in terms of uh, the barycentric frame and if you use this then you get the result in terms of the synodic frame but the treatment of the problem then will be little different for the barycentric frame so we have this equation written the equation of motion first in the barycentric frame this we have to do necessarily there is no option to that because we have to always write the newton's law in in an inertial reference frame now we will reduce it to the synodic reference frame which we have assumed it's a rotating with angular velocity omega s so uh, this is the angular velocity of the angular velocity of the synodic frame and is nothing but also the angular velocity of the mass m1 and m2 okay so with this basic formulation now we can proceed and uh, work out the whole problem in the next step m we can eliminate from this equation so this can be written as d square r by dt square equal to minus g m1 by r1 q and this we uh brief as mu1 by r1 q minus mu2 by r2 q r2 where mu1 equal to g times m1 and mu2 equal to g times m2 thus we have our equation in the inertial frame as mu1 by r1 q equation of motion of mass m barycentric frame and this can be reduced in terms of the synodic frame for this you need to look into uh, this relationship if this is in the barycentric frame so dr by dt this with respect to the synodic frame omega cross r so with this notation uh, so what this is indicating that i have a 
inertial frame here which I am writing as the barycentric frame. Another frame I have here which I am writing as synodic frame omega is the angular velocity of this frame okay. and let us say. So, uh, what I am interested that I have one point here located whose radius vector is r 1 or simply r this is simply r. Okay. So, rate of change of this r in the barycentric frame if it is written like this. So, it can be expressed in this way and uh, this is pretty simple. Uh, uh, let us do this quickly here in this place r equal to we express this in terms of the synodic frame components uh, x s or simply we will write x not to complicate the whole thing e 1 cap y times e 2 cap plus z times e 3 cap. This is a vector given to us. If we differentiate this vector with respect to time in the barycentric frame, and then this the other things will be given as x times omega cross e 1 cap plus y times omega cross e 2 cap plus z times omega cross e 3 cap. So, here the vector r this, this is the point p here. So, it may be moving and because of this this components are changing in the synodic frame. You first just differentiate this. Once you differentiate this part uh, by, while breaking this up and applying the normal calculus rule. So, we can break here in this part. Okay. Once we have broken it like this, this part then becomes d x by or d r by d t d r by d t with respect to the synodic frame. In the synodic frame your this is the synodic frame e 1, e 2 and e 3 these are the uh, unit vectors located along. So, unit vector in the synodic frame does not change it is a fixed okay. and this frame itself is changing it is a rotating. Okay. This frame right now it is a like this after some time it may be looking like this. So, this is e 1, e 2, e 3 later on e 1, e 2 and e 3 it becomes like this. So, it rotates because of presence of this omega. So, this indicates your motion with respect to the synodic frame and this part already I have discussed this part while discussing the uh, central force motion uh, differentiation of uh, we are doing differentiation of d e 1 by d t which is nothing but omega cross e 1 cap. And this we have discussed while discussing about the central force motion. So, I am not no longer expanding that again y 2 cap times z e 3 cap. Therefore, this gets reduced to d r by d t with respect to the synodic frame and omega cross r. So, d r by d t with respect to the barycentric frame will be equal to d r by d t with respect to the synodic frame and plus omega cross r. Okay, so, we stop here and we will continue in the next lecture the same uh, whatever we have left we will complete that. Okay, thank you.